fact, let's go back to the switching mechanism. Now, switching can be by activation or it can be by repression. I gather it works by repression, doesn't it? Yeah, so basically DNA methylation. By the way, methylation is a chemical group. Um, you may know it from methyl alcohol. Right. It's a group of a carbon and uh, three hydrogens attached to it. And it, it actually attaches covalently, attaches in a, in a sort of irreversible manner to the DNA, to the genes. And in, in that way, it causes a change in structure. Of the whole gene or just of that, that segment? Region. Just that region. Yeah. And that's the way it works. Again, going back to what we talked before about accessibility, basically the presence of this methyl group on the DNA molecule, on the gene, right, it works by altering the chromatin conformation, the protein formation, the, the packaging of the DNA and makes it inaccessible, and that way it turns it off. It doesn't allow the reading machine to come in and use that gene. Okay. Um, and other genes are left unmethylated, without the methyl group, and they're exposed, they're accessible. They work. Why, why do you, just as a speculative philosophical result, why do you think nature chooses a repressive method of turning things off and making them inaccessible rather than, you know, turning them on, if you want. So this is really, this is an excellent question. It is? Oh, yeah, good. Yeah, wonderful <laughs> And, because this is not this true in every organism. So if you take a simple organism, like a bacteria or a yeast, um, they have a lot of genes, not as many as we have. Um, but basically, in those organisms, the genes are on all the time all of the genes. So just in, in, in humans or mammals or? The methylation is only in mammals and in plants. In plants. So it's also very complex, higher organism plants. Um, in any event, in a, in a bacteria, for instance, almost all the genes are on all the time. And if the organism wants to turn off a gene, which it does, it has to have a specific way of identifying it, get going there, and turning it off. Okay. In mammals, the situation is different. In almost every cell of our body, there's a whole store of genes that that cell doesn't use. They're off. So in, in mammals, there has to be some sort of different strategy for gene regulation. And one of the important strategies is that a lot of genes are turned off. And methylation is a wonderful strategy for turning off a lot, a lot of pieces of the DNA, a lot of information in a global manner. And that's probably the, the, the special feature of methylation in terms of gene regulation. And this is needed, for instance, in an organism like us, like man, where we have many, many, many different kinds of cells, and we have to store within us a lot, within our genome, within our genes, lots of information that's not used normally. It's only used in one tiny little cell in some place in the brain mm. on a Tuesday. <laughs> right? and, and, and so everywhere else it has to be kept off. It has to be put in an inactive form in an inaccessible form. And so methylation is ideally suited for, for mammals, basically. So how does this connect with disease? Does the, the, the switching go wrong? Is that part of the disease factor? So um, first of all, you're right that DNA methylation is often involved in disease. Um, and yes, the, 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 the answer to that is correct. Many diseases are actually caused by dysregulation. Okay? So th there, are some, there are genetic diseases where the genes themselves are faulty, and so they don't work properly. Right. But there are also many diseases where the, the problem is not that the genes are damaged. It's not that they're faulty or defective. 
Rather, there's something wrong with their regulation. Uh, a good example of this, for instance, is a, a disease called Fragile X syndrome. It's the most prevalent form of mental retardation um, in children. What is it normally called in? Uh, it's called Fragile it's called X fragile syndrome. Oh. Yeah. And well, ordinary people call it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh. And um, it turns out that this disease is caused by abnormal regulation of a gene, because it gets abnormally, aberrantly methylated. It shouldn't right. be methylated. It gets methylated, and that's what causes the disease. And so one, so repressing genes where they're not supposed to be repressed is a source of disease. Okay. Is there another source where they're, uh, they, they're not just repressed, but they're taking off when they shouldn't be, if you want? So, for instance, in cancer, yeah. uh, both of these things happen. Oh, both sides, I see. Yeah. Uh, mostly, the genes that are supposed to be on get turned off by methylation, uh, but there are also many genes that are supposed to be off, and they abnormally become demethylated. The methyl groups get taken off. So in cancer, there's a lot of changes in DNA methylation that contribute to the behavior of the cancer cell. Well, when you're doing research in this kind of thing, do you learn about diagnostic techniques for figuring different cancers because of different switching mechanisms? So this is a, um, a, a actually a, a field that, that many people work in. And it turns out that diagnosis, for instance, in cancer, if we can give, use that as an example, uh, diagnosis is, uh, turns out to be a very, very important part of um, handling the disease. Right? Um, and that's for a couple of reasons. Right? One is that uh, we now know that different types of diseases need to be treated differently. And the other thing is that today, we're in the, a, a lot of the efforts are going into what being called personalized medicine. So in personalized medicine, you try to understand what in this individual is the best approach for treatment. Right? And DNA methylation plays a big role in these diagnostic tools. Uh, first of all, because it allows you to actually pinpoint the exact character of the disease that you're treating. And this is done now, today. And this, this is, is done today. Right? How long is this? This is just the last 10 years? or? Um, I think the, the, the word personalized medicine yeah. was coined about 10 years ago, but for, ma for many years people have been doing it unconsciously. And there are many tools for diagnosis, and, but methylation is, is one of the ones that I think has a, it has a lot of resolution. I mean, it's good resolution. And it can be used generally because every, every type of cancer has methylation. Right? So and different kinds. So you different different kinds. kinds. So you, do you, are you uh, ranging some kind of classification or taxonomy of all the different kinds? Where so are we on that stage? That's an ongoing process. I see. Um, I think an ongoing and not completed process. Ultimately, I think that, yes, we'll be able to do that. Mm, give me a timeline. No, uh, <laughs> no I know. It's that's not a good question. That's not a fair question. <laughs> You always have signed. When are you going to deliver the goods? <laughs> I want my package of salvation. Now, I'll tell you why it's not. You, you bring up a good point. Mm. Why it's hard for me to tell you. Mm. Because the technologies for studying DNA methylation are advancing every second. So what I tell you today is not going to be true tomorrow in terms of, of timeline. Because tomorrow, our ability to measure methylation and methylation in specific places is going to be much better than it was yesterday. Um, well, I want to move on to treatment, but we'll take a break first, and then we'll come up to the, how it affects all this understanding how it affects treatment. Okay. <laughs>